Okay, hello everybody. Um, my name is Ossi Koivistoinen and I'm a continuous integration architect in Nokia. And I think it's worth mentioning Nokia also in this context because there is some co connection with the framework and, and with our company. Uh, the idea for this talk came to me yesterday morning when there was this one-man band uh, talk about how, how single person can automate tests uh, using robot framework. And I, I wanted to tell, talk about enterprise level problem that what if you have a 100,000 man band that needs to use robot framework? Uh, it has cer certain different things uh, uh, happening there. First about Nokia, you, you might know Nokia about these things. We don't do them anymore. So somebody is wondering that what do we then do? Well, we do everything between to get the call from here to his mobile phone. So it's still 22 billion. American billion, so not just thousand millions, not bil million millions business uh, with about 100,000 employees. And uh, I actually went around asking that how many test cases we have with different test automation frameworks five years ago. And we had about 100,000 robot framework test cases at the time. I don't I have no idea on the figure today, but uh, I assume it's more, maybe much more. Um, yeah birthplace of robot framework and we still maintain some key components. Our colleagues in Romania uh, maintain the assets library and swing library and colleagues in Poland, the red editor. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the problem, the single man band uh, doing robot framework has very good communication within the test automation team. The 100,000 uh, people, not so much. and. Uh, that leads to the situation that uh, these test automation teams are product specific and they tend to implement the same code over and over and over again. The same stuff, talking with REST APIs, uh, parsing data from JSON output, some, something like this. It's something that's relatively easy to do, but yet there are difficulties in it and you probably do it wrong the first and second time. So there would be value in reusing it, but it tends not to be reused. So the corporate approach is what you could do. Well, you can tell the team to use the code from other teams. Um, generally, that doesn't work because it's not meant to be reused. Uh, it has some special assumptions that use our logging framework, then report the results to this uh, other tool, our uh, test management system or, or whatever. And, and by the way, you need to use this target reservation system and you need to log into our firewall first. So you can get started by taking somebody else's library but uh, it ends up being copying the library. Well, then you can set up a central team trying to do the libraries, but we have learned that it doesn't work either. It's both rigid and slow, and uh, it's because there is contracts, there is prioritization, it's the overwork team, so uh, they never have time to do your stuff, and essentially the central team is always competing with the test automation developers who can do the library themselves, so they have to get more value from the central team compared to the fun of implementing it yourself. So it needs to be relatively good, and it never is because you take the resources away from the central team and it doesn't work. So teams learn to avoid this, this kind of central teams. So what to do? Um, they need to be easy to use, the libraries, so uh, that people can, when they find the library, they can install it to your virtual ENV, Docker, whatever. So it needs to be pip install. It cannot be that go to our version control, do this custom magic thing and go from there. And it cannot have these assumptions on the test environment that you need to use this and this and this and this and install those packages before you can use this library. It needs to do one, one thing and do it well and needs to be documented. And in addition to be easy to use, for user point of view, it needs to be easy to share. So there needs to be this agreement that when you share the library, it doesn't imply contract that now you maintain it for the whole company and they can like force you to update it because then nobody will share. And also, you don't need to ask permissions from anybody to share it, because then uh, nothing will happen. So the solution is do it like the internal, do it like open source, but do it inside the company. Um, and in, uh, so we just need to have a place where you can publish internally the stuff. And uh, we have an environment uh, called Common Robot Libraries, very generic name. And the tooling here is familiar to you. So Gary Jenkins, LibDoc, everybody has shown them in the presentations. Maybe the new one is the DevPI. So uh, it's a PyPy index, but for development. So there you can have any number of indices 
uh, developers can upload their own index uh, that is backed by the internet PyPy. So you can install your own version, development version of any library or add one library there, then just give that index URL as an address where to install the packages and it will get all the internet PyPy stuff there uh, from the internet backend plus the development person of yourself. So it's very easy to develop. Uh, kind of you can build the test environments in standard way. Uh, if, just do pip install in your Docker or VM or wherever and uh, it just comes and works as a PyPy. And as a side effect, it's a slippery slope to real open source. So in the, inside the company, this is some, somewhat difficult sometimes uh, to go directly there. But once you do the library as if it's meant to be used by the layperson from the internet, suddenly you have well-documented library that's packaged with setup py and that's distributed by PyPy. So uh, actually we have done that. So part of these common robot libraries is today available in GitHub. And I think they probably should be in Edge Marketplace like we just learned, which is probably a better location. And as a one example, we have this interactive sessions library that uh, automates, um, well, it automates p-expect stuff, so stacked shells, shell on top of shell, uh, going with SSH, SSH somewhere, uh, then maybe telnet, then maybe whatever, and uh, yeah, maybe this doesn't, but it's well documented, it's available in the internet, so you can put shell on top of shell and do p-expect style stuff there. This is available today, and doc docs are here in read the docs, so go there, use our libraries. And thank you. I still had one nice picture. Thank you.